Right guys, so today what we're going to do is we're going to look at scent sensors and for those who don't know what scent sensor is, it stands for Single Edge Nibble Transmission and a lot of vehicles since 2015 have been using them as differential pressure sensors. So you'll probably see it on your DPF, your GPF or your low pressure EGR. So let's have a quick look and see how you can identify them and how you test them. Right guys, so here's some basic tests you could do with your multimeter. I've got it set to volts DC, as you can see here. I've got negative, obviously on the battery negative there. Positive probe now in this 2018 Passat. The top wire, which is uh, yellow and brown, is a five volt supply feed, as you can see there. So a good five volts. Middle wire is the ground, which is brown. Typical in most vehicles, brown is the negative. We can see there we've got a very small amount of voltage, which would be expected. But when you go into the signal wire on a scent sensor, you get normally about 3.9 or 4 volts. That will stay constant throughout the rave range. It won't change because that is a communication signal. It's not a varying voltage. So if you're measuring a normal DPF, you might expect to see a volt or a volt and a half as you rev the engine up. But in this case, it will stay exactly at 4 volts. It's also good practice as well, guys, just to make sure that the ground is a good ground on the circuit. If you put the black probe or multimeter on the earth of the switch and you put the positive to the signal wire, you should still get a good 5 volts. And what that proves, you've got a good strong supply voltage and a nice clean earth. There's no voltage drops in the positive or the negative line. So that's across the positive supply and the negative directly at the switch. Right guys, so I've connected the picoscope to the signal wire, which is the yellow and the grey. Uh, opened up, and the very first signal you start to see here looks very similar to like a digital math when you connect it, when you've got the time scale at 20 milliseconds per division. Uh, it's currently sitting at 12, uh, sorry, 10 volts. If you set it any lower, you can see it's a 5 volt signal, but if you set it down to 5 volts, then it can, sometimes it goes over range, so 10 is a good one to have it set to. So if you start to speed up, the time base, bring it right down there. I've got it now at uh, 200 uh, microsecond per division. You can physically see the scent signal that we're getting out of that sensor. Now what I'm going to do is I'm just going to bring up a repeat trigger just to kind of make it a bit more obvious to see it. And there we go, I've paused it. So 5 volt signal doesn't go down to zero, so like Linbus it doesn't go right down to zero. But you can see you've got uh, what looks like kind of packets of data, because you've got the similar type waveform reappearing and reappearing. Now, if I uh, run that just now, and I go into more here on Picoscope 7, select serial decoding and go sent fast, uh, what we do then is we would normally select the channel we've got on, but we've got this on channel A. So select next. I'm going to bring up the binary on the digital format and in the, the table below. And then what you can physically see is the packets of data that are coming out from that sensor. So you can see, here's the byte there, so if you get eight bits there for a byte. Now, I'll be honest with you, when it comes into serial decoding, I really don't know what the individual things need. You need to be engineering level to, to have the information to know what each one of these packets physically mean. As far as I'm concerned, I've never managed to find another way of looking at it. But what you can see is the identifier, the end of messages, and, the, and the, the, the packets of data in between. So it's a good way of checking if your sense sends is physically sending out a signal.